Okay, hello. I'm not sure if we're getting on to show up or not, but uh, in lieu of uh, wanting to get going and, and, and use as much of our time as possible, my name is Hans Buka. I'm going to be introducing the rest of our panelists in a second. And before we get started right into this, let me uh, start with a quick presentation um, just to sort of frame our topic for today. We are going to be talking about the balancing act between automation uh, artificial intelligence and, and uh, humanity and global recruitment. Uh, CEO of eTechie, and we do automated and expert interviews. Um, and obviously, so we're, we're right in the middle of some of this action. Let me uh, move on to the next slide. So basically, you know, we're going to spend a little time today talking about recruiters and their interactions with candidates and vice versa, more specifically and the balance of technology and even the balance between the recruitment side and the candidate side in what is obviously the crux of what the staffing industry is all about and trying to place good people with the right skills and the right jobs. And that balancing act is really somewhat tricky. So in the process of what especially eTech is involved, but all around, as we know, we have lots and lots of candidates and we want to find the right one, you know, the infamous funnel. And along the way, we're obviously applying some technology and perhaps too much technology doesn't leave a good feeling, not enough, and you're going to be falling behind because there's such a big job to do to try to find the right matches. Um, so a lot of the where, how, when are these bots versus experts going to be applied. So specifically, we're going to kind of get into that and share some experiences. And just to give you a little teaser here on the bottom, as a great example um, out there, uh, I think it's on DICE about, you know, the skills that are most sought after. And as we know, uh, very often, especially in the technology sector, but it could be lots of other sectors, um, you know, we, we think that, you know, it's putting a test and doing some things and uh, bots and some AI that we're going to get it nailed down. But here's a perfect example of where the most in demand tech skill is project management. And we all know that project management is quite a bit more than just the, uh, the specific logical skills that we have, EQ is about as high as it gets and when you're trying to manage a lot of people. So that's where the balancing act needs to be fully appreciated. And that's where we're going to get into, especially as we're trying to stay more human with the technology in remote learning, remote distancing, um, remote working is coming into play. So I try to put a little grid, I'm a pictures guy. So I'd like to try to figure out how do we think about this? And in reality, you know, we have two sides here. We have a candidate, it's really a lot about the matching and, and how they match together. We have recruiters. As what we can see, you know, the recruiters, they're basically, you know, working towards figuring out whether this is a good fit or not. And they, they it's what they need. They need a lot of information, a lot of data need to collect that and process that data and process interviews and process information on, 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 on these candidates. But we sometimes forget that that's what the candidates would like as well. And now, of course, candidates being uh, courted constantly for opportunities, they also need it now. So very often when you might see a recruiter, you know, using this technology, and if they're not completely transparent for with it, um, it may not lead to the upper right triangle here, the right uh, rectangle, which is, you know, finding the right fit, feeling good about it, get, really getting that matched really confidently. And the more they extract, they learn what they need. If they're not providing as well, you might see the candidates not feel so good about the, uh, about the re relationship, about what, uh, what they're trying to achieve, which is find out the best opportunity that they can in the market. So with that, this, uh, it's a setup that we're looking for the balance between humanity and feelings, you know, essentially what, what people and humanity are about. And then on the other side, technology and automation. We put it obviously in the context of today's work market and opportunity market, which is globally and on, on all the issues that come with that as well. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And let me introduce our panel, or let, and better yet, let me let them introduce themselves. And let's see, Adam, why don't you begin and kick us off? Thanks, Hans. Really appreciate it. Um, my name is Adam Lombardi, and I am Senior Director of Delivery Transformation for K-Force. I've been with K-Force for 13 and a half years or so, and the first 10 years of my career were was really spent within the field, kind of dealing with the problems and the challenges day to day on the front lines from a, a recruiting desk and then as a leadership desk over a recruiting team. 
And for the last three or so years, three and a half years, I've been more focused on really, um, you know, technology evaluation, how we can apply different processes and, and change the way that we support the candidates and customers and really the, the people in general within the market. And, you know, we run into these problems of automation on a regular basis and we try to solve those problems and um, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, just take a little bit of time today to, to be able to kind of let you know what, what we've seen out there and um, how we're looking to, to solve the challenge that we're all facing every day. Thanks, Adam. Uh, Jamie, why don't you uh, help us learn a little bit more about you? You bet. Thanks, Hans. So I'm Jamie Herbert from Capstone IT. My uh, firm, as the name suggests, uh, specializes all in the, in the uh, IT space, both staffing and solutions. I've been at the firm for uh, just over three years now, and the scope of my responsibility does include operations, uh, inclusive of recruiting and HR. Prior to joining Capstone, though, I spent 25 years on the corporate side, 15 of those as an HR executive, and super, super excited to be part of this group here today. Because to me, I've always thought about it as, as both high tech and high touch. And the art of this is finding the right balance. And like many of you have been around such that, uh, long enough now that uh, high tech not that long ago was the fax machine. So it's pretty fascinating to think how far we've come. Yet at the end of the day, it's really about relationships. And as Hans's uh, matrix just suggested, that the all important fit in the multiple uh, dimensions of that fit component. So glad to be here today. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, Denver, and then and then we'll talk to Steve. Great. Thank you, Hans, and uh, thanks for having me today. My name is Denver Brown. I'm uh, Vice President of Client Solutions here at Manpower Group. Uh, I lead our telecommunications and system integrator industry <clears throat> verticals uh, across North America. My team and I, so what that really means, my team and I, we're, really, we're responsible for creating solutions uh, for our clients that really bring together uh, capabilities uh, across all of our brands, across Manpower Group that solve uh, our clients' challenges. And I'm really excited to be a part of today's panel. And I'm really even more excited about our topic because you know, we're going to touch on two areas that are um, that I that are close to me. Which one of them is technology and how we can leverage technology to help people, including our staff, the candidates we're working with, and the clients we serve. But also my other passion, uh, helping people find um, and grow their own uh, purpose-driven careers. So, uh, and then really, I think most importantly is how do you find the right balance between the two, which I think is a great discussion point. So. Excited to be here today, and and thank you again for having me, and looking forward to the discussion. Thank you, Denver. Steve, Steve is uh, he's going to keep us all in check here. So looking forward to hearing from Steve. That's because I have the smallest picture on the panel. Uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> not that now. Works. That worked. Uh, my name is Steve Levy. I am the manager of technical recruiting at Zip.co. We are an ethical buy now, pay later. Uh, post startup company, global in nature, based in Sydney, Australia. Positions are all remote in the U.S. I have never spent a, a, a single day on the staffing side, but I have been recruiting for 38 years. Uh, and prior to that, I was an engineer for 15 years. Uh, in full disclosure, I am one of eTechies advisors. I, um, as technical as I am, I know that in this case, engineers um really do appreciate the high touch the more the you know there there really is a in an incredible a balance that needs to be stricken between you know high tech and high touch uh what we're seeing in, in the place and in the communities where i i live and breathe all these technical communities the balance really is moving back towards more humanity and and hence the you know, the, the one of my most quotable phrases uh, from conference talks is tools don't recruit people do and there is there are inherent challenges with with, with going to increase automation uh, there are inherent challenges with calling something ai when it's not really ai and 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 um you know on going forward uh in in recruiting you know technology is is an integral part of efficiency it's an integral part of reliability of scalability but we can never lose fact sight of the fact that we are, in fact, um, 
managing people's lives and people's careers with the decisions we're helping them make. So there. Yeah. And um, just to finish off the introduction, my name is Hans Buko. I've um, been sort of um, involved in, I like to call it workforce supply chain um, for about uh, 20 some odd years. Um, having previously founded another company called eWork, uh, very much like people are familiar with Upwork. Um, and we too had a VMS product. We had a, probably the number one brand in VMS uh, for healthcare for quite a long time. So I get responsibility for, uh, for having been involved um, in establishing some DMS technology in, um, in this industry back in the 2000s, early 2000s, we're still there. Um, and now we're obviously uh, thinking about that more and more as the technology is really, and technology obviously um, broadly stated, um, I think the latest, um, let's say manifestation that captures everyone's mind is uh, machine learning and AI, since it takes a lot of data and starts helping you make decisions. Um, and therefore, the reason it's called AI, it's a, it's, it's a thought that it's going to uh, complement and do some work. And, and we've seen a little pictures of bots and automation, but we're going to use that probably more as a proxy for identifying how, how the technology, how the communication is being augmented by some of this uh, um, modeling of what people say and do uh, so as to complement and augment the performance that we're seeing in, in recruiting. And, and recruiting really does boil down, I think, lots of factors, but one of the most important one is, is the matching, is, is making sure that people are pretty happy with where they're going to go relative to making their commitment to do that job, to do that work. And the companies also uh, making a commitment to employees and individuals to give them um, the type of satisfying work or, or interesting work, well-paid work, all the things that we hear a lot about needing adjusting in today's market. So that hits on some of the things that we promised we were going to talk about, improving work talent matching. Uh, candidate experience, I think, was something that we want to also bring up because um, it is fair to say that that pendulum has swung. You know, everybody likes to say the talent wars are over and the talent won. <laughs> Um, that was something we all love to say during the dot com when this was the last big wave of this. And now, of course, today's world makes that uh, make that look like a small tsunami. Yeah. Um, so finally, let's uh, let's sort of focus on the recruiting side, being around the qualifying, the matchmaking, uh, and other technologies that we might want to see injected. And I'd have to uh, kind of go around the horn some more here. Maybe Denver, you can kick us off on what you've seen. In the environment these days, um, you know the type of examples that caught your eye. Uh, we'll get into you know well balanced or not well balanced, but but what are some of the things that you guys are looking at that uh, that really is, is is sort of really really makes the point home that this is a balancing act. Yeah, I think you know we think about the sourcing and the matching. Uh, you know, I think from our perspective and, and my perspective, uh, we look at technology as a way. Uh, to allow our people to really focus on the humanistic elements of what we do, right? So I think that's a big, um, um, you know, reason that we look at look to leverage technology is to uh, allow our own staff to um, focus on some of those person-to-person uh, -person interactions and the humanistic elements of, of really what we do. And then, uh, you know, just some other things um, that from a technology perspective is that we want to meet candidates where they are. And so sometimes that means, especially as, uh, you know, technology is, has spread across every aspect of, of, of our lives and not just in our industry, uh, you know, some candidates, they prefer to, um, you know, interact at least initially, maybe online uh, or automated tools, et cetera, to kind of get themselves into the, into the mix from a candidate perspective. Um, you know, and, and, and uh, another, I guess, um, just, uh, some additional perspective from um, from my point of view is that you know we know in our industry uh, the talent is scarce and, and and we're not immune to that in our industry as well right so being able to leverage technology to um, allow our our recruiters to um, you know be able to work more efficiently that's I think it's a critical component that that we've got to factor in as we make technology decisions. Yeah, I imagine today everything kicks off online given the pandemic. Um, but maybe, Jamie, any, anything that you've seen where it suggests, you know, candidates uh, want to go beyond that? Or how else do you personally engage 
uh, and how to use technology perhaps to uh, to kind of make that engagement you know more compelling yeah i build i i would echo what denver shared and keep in mind uh, when i introduced myself the first part of my title is finance right so i get the productivity the efficiency at, at the same time, it's about relationships between human being and human being. One of my favorite expressions, by the way, is meeting people where they are, which to me, the world we're in today, it's not an or, it's an and, right? So, some folks, believe it or not, it's still a phone conversation that is most productive early on. Because the key word here is we're trying to build a connection and keep in mind the, the candidates, that's, that's exactly right, Steve, the, the candidates that we're talking to, we ought to assume that there's 15 other firms that are having similar conversations to the one that we would like to have. So what are you doing to differentiate? What are you doing to communicate for impact? And uh, I often have the conversation with our own recruiters, the, the movie, Jerry Maguire, you, you, you are trying to be this person's agent at the end of the day, which again, there's 14 other folks trying to do the same thing you are. So what is really compelling makes you unique I tend to I'll come right out and say it, err more on the side of the high touch relational side of the equation, not only because of, of me personally in my journey, but it all comes down to your firm and what your firm views as your, as your uniques. And in our case, one of our uh, uniques we believe is the employee experience, which starts at that very first interaction. And what did that interaction do? Did the interaction count? And did that person, are they, are they on the fence? Are they a detractor? Are they a potential promoter that wants more? And then another one of our uniques we call our quality pledge, which means that we need to do things different for all of our stakeholders, including that candidate that could become our employee or could become a customer at some point in time. So again, it's about, it's about getting that balance right. So Steve, you're recruiting, you're on the firm side most of the time, you're hearing all this staffing, staffing, is, is recruited candidates or found a, rec a candidate that they're interested in that's maybe within their their knowledge of, of, of people and now they want to represent them to the company so as a recruiter representing the company the acquirer perhaps of those talents how do you how do you interact with them i mean how do you do that and especially around the tech side of it you know which sometimes gets pretty specific to, to knowledge and and, and, and getting confidence and trust that you know people are representing things properly what, what are your views on that I, I think it, it, you hit on personally the confidence and trust that people are, are representing people properly. As I said earlier, I'm, there's no such thing as a former engineer. I, I haven't, the last time I coded was 2001. It was a you know, basic C++ STL environment. So I, you know, I'm not a complete moron when it comes to understanding what coding is like. But, <clears throat> you know, um, much in the same way, on the on on the corporate side, we call LinkedIn the Blue Devil, as an example. And 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 back in two two thousand fifteen, I coined the phrase in mauling. And if you think of, I receive personally some fifteen to seventeen in malls a day because I have a lot of technical terms in my profile. And you know you know we love you know you'd be a perfect senior software engineer, software engineering leader. You know, and and I can tell no one actually read my profile. They're just spamming things out. Um, you know, so I, all I'm asking from, from the, from, from, from the staffing world is a don't lie B don't over inflate C educate yourself a bit more about what you're trying to, and who you're trying to represent. So my best friends in the world's recruiters, I, I do, I do not have this, you know, visceral, you know, peristaltic reaction to being, you know, called by recruiters about, you know, representing people. It doesn't bother me, but ultimately it comes, you're representing a human being. So all you have to do is represent them the most human babe. If you want to do it with, you know, via technology, that's fine. If you want to call me up, that's fine. I mean, you still have to keep in mind that you're, 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 you're hoping to, you know, change a person's life regardless of the approach you take with it. So just do it in the most humane way possible. Yeah, I think, you know, you, you hit upon something in terms of that sincerity and get the real message across. Um, you guys have heard me say it, that uh, one of the things, I don't mind bots, you know, I don't mind uh, automated support. Um, I just hate it when it tries to fool you that it's not, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
I think that's that's the one area where it kind of builds on distrust versus building on trust, where you know, if you're not transparent, of course, then and, and try to misrepresent, then everything else thereafter could be similarly, you know, held. So it, it's uh, it's something that I think that sincerity and that representation is important. I mean, that was the early day of bots, and I'm not going to mention the company, but I mean, I I advised them in terms of how the conversation would go and 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 the rules that were built into it. And it's almost a game now amongst more experienced, in this case, engineers. They want to see if 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 this conversation is is botish. So they'll start they'll throw off, you know, off putting questions and requests just to see what comes back. Yeah, and, I, I, and, I haven't heard thrown in typos with which to sort of you know make it seem like the bot is is more human, right? Adam, no. thanks for uh, for. Uh, Supporting us there nice and quietly. What are, you, what are your thoughts? You're, you're, you're probably deploying more of this than, than any of us. So by all means, let's hear from you. You know, when we when we look at technology, you know, within, you know, our organization, you know, we want to make sure that we're understanding the benefit to those candidates or the people that we're interacting with. Um, I think so many times within, you know, the industry, and I even learned from this early on when I first started working with, with some of these bots was, you know, you look at that bot as maybe it's a problem solver, or it's a silver bullet. And I think early on, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of ideas around, you know, this could just speed things up and, you know, we can be in touch with more candidates where we started really realizing that relationship that was really the foundation of our business that started falling by the wayside. So what you really want to be able to do is when you're finding that balance, you know, you want to be able to ask yourself, is this benefiting really who we're engaging with and who we're trying to help at the end of the day, or are we just looking through the lens of this is our business proposition and this is really going to help us and finding that balance between the two, because with the amount of opportunity that's out there that we're trying to support within our customer base, we do need ways to automate the process, but it's really about where we interject and, you know, inject that automation at certain parts of the funnel and certain parts of the overall journey uh, versus just assuming at the front end of the journey before that relationship has been developed, before um, the really value proposition has been put out there for the candidates and the people that you're working with to really start to take shape. So I think it's just one thing that we really start to, to strive towards is keeping that, that high touch and that relationship component involved. And we automate where we can enable but not necessarily automate to just kind of take over the process. Yeah. Hey Hans, if, if I can build on Adam's point there too. I mean, Absolutely. if you think about the art of what we're trying to do in recruiting and, and we being both on the company side and the client uh, or in the candidate side, there are multiple dimensions to this. I think the thing we often think about is the role itself, right? And how can I go deep and fast <laughs> around the role itself? To which I say, nice start. There's three other dimensions. There's the culture buzzword in business, right? So cultural fit in both directions. And yeah. as much as we want to say that that's all a science, there's still a lot of feel and relational capital that has to be spent to do that. There's this thing called manager fit. All of us have seen the studies that have been going back 15 years now. People join companies and leave managers or choose to stay and give discretionary effort based on who the manager is. Again, some of that is, is chemistry that you're trying to get a feel for very, very early on in the process. And then there's this fourth dimension called work group fit. Who, who are my teammates? You know, you think about some of the research that Gallup has done for years and do I have a best friend at work? Hmm. Well, well if, I'm going to, if I'm going to work at this place, is there even the potential that I have shared interests so forth with these folks? So at the end of the day, we got to remember that all of the above matters. Yes, cycle time matters, cost uh, cost per hire matters. Uh, how do I beat the competition for this critical talent? But there's a whole bunch of things that we're trying to assess as we go through that courting process. Right. Yeah. And again, as I think we highlighted earlier, yeah. that's as with intermediaries involved, like with proxies involved, um, because not until a later stage do you typically see the right direct engagement, given the fact that, you know, as we demonstrated on the funneling, there's a lot to go through and a lot to sort through. And a lot to build upon in terms of assessments, right? And obviously, in the beginning, a lot of the so-called automation that's being utilized to take data, and a lot of criticisms, you know, on, on you see them all around about how we're losing candidates because the the, the automation is too tight or it's too one-dimensional. You know, diversity issues, lots of things that come into play. 
Um, but the bottom line is there is a lot of interest in trying to do these things um, more complete, faster, at a lower price point. So, you know, obviously it, it begs this uh, engineering challenge of how to bring uh, the technology and the automation, um, but then also make sure that you're not overstepping its use and releasing that information and that guidance onto someone that can take it to the next level uh, as part of doing, you know, a, a, a true process by, by both sides of the, of the match equation. Um, anyone else sort of like from what we've seen before we move on, you know, a little bit to you know, what, what are we doing, you know, about this and how are we engaging with uh, with these enhancements? I know we've got representatives here that are in bigger company environments that, you know, the technology can be amortized across a larger operation. Um, some, you know, myself included, I'm more on the entrepreneurial side where we're throwing that technology and getting it out there so as to try to find, you know, increased value, increased um Productivity. Any, any examples? Anybody want to, uh, to sort of highlight something that they've seen recently, or they're doing themselves that, that that seemed to be a good, a good demonstration of this balancing act between the technology and individuals? Steve, you got to, you got to, you got to see. Something yeah, like I, 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 I'm in this case. It's it's a debate over how much I can say. Um, uh, Part part of part of uh, we're in the process of doing a massive uh, ramp up in hiring. No, this does not mean you can call me and chill your people to me. Um, we can talk at a later time. Uh, but you know we're we're balancing. Uh, th there are in, inherent challenges in technical recruiting, in that most people who recruit uh, technical people aren't technical. And so, oh, I, I recognize a word, and you start putting things together. And but you need to understand that uh, most engineers, I, I sort of, I'd like to say, they live their lives at the intersection of ADHD Highway and Asperger's Boulevard. And the way that we tend to interview them exacerbates, you know, issues of of neurodiversity, and which causes many people to just, hey, back off. I I don't like your process. And so, what we're we're doing is incrementally introducing you know more assessments you know not not e techy like human assessments but at, at certain points in the process just to validate you know the human interpretation of what's on a resume and again knowing that technical people are, are inherently bad at writing resumes and there's more information often between the lines if you can connect the lines above and below them. So, you know, you, you see um, in, in, in the technical forums, this, this abject hatred for more and more technical, uh, you know, uh, uh, automated technical assessments. But I think where, 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 where companies that are, have made the mistake is pegging themselves more towards one side versus blending the two together. You know, and, and that really is a take home lesson between, you know, in, in this case, it's how do we find a way to um, uh, blend both the automated piece and the human piece together? And, you know, you, you have to take your, you know, on, on, on a company by company approach to it because, you know, it, it all depends on the people on the people you have there. Some of them want to have the human interaction. Some of them want to you be able to see assessments before they speak with them. So, you know, you, you have to A-B test, and that's what we're doing now. We're A-B testing, you know, technology to see if it you know, re you know, produces the kinds of performance and deliverables that we need as we grow. Yeah. I, I, I used a lot of words to say not a whole lot, but I, I, ho I'm, I'm, but I, but I can't say certain things, but I can say things privately if you want to contact me. Denver, you guys have a big organization, lots of information. I know, I know that. Um, yeah. Any ways that you see that are been good uses of technology with which to progress the uh, the matchmaking, the, the engagement, the representations? Um, you know, out there in the market yeah. these days, you know, everybody remote working. You know, there's a lot of uh, sort of anonymity, uh, a lot of, you know, unfortunately, um, 
behavior where people are misrepresenting and you know all that's gone up obviously as we know we we catch fakes on our our system more than we've ever before right um so how do you find that balance between you know not uh, not 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 tightening the filter too much you know letting some of that expression come in um with this with these algorithms and uh, and the ai and the machine learning uh, but also leave the humanity some breathing room i mean um what, what can you when you can tell us about what you guys are doing? Denver, sorry. Yeah, I don't know if I, I lost you there at the, at the last, but um, yeah, you know, just from a technology standpoint, um, a couple of thoughts that that kind of jump uh, jump out to me. You know, during so a couple of things. So one, during the pandemic, um, you know, early on, we had a lot of clients that you know were in a position where they. You know, they had no choice but to furlough a lot of their workers. And at the same time, we had other clients that were pivoting that, that needed uh, talent very, very quickly. So we leveraged technology to help that, right? You know, uh, platforms like Text to Apply, for example, is one that we leveraged to, to just, just from the sheer volume, right, of, of what we were dealing with at the time. Um, so that's an example. But to your point around, um, you know, uh, the proxy nature of, of, of in, in, you know, anonymity uh, that we're seeing, especially now that everyone's working from home, um, you know, we've been supported by, um, um, you know, your organization, specifically even pre-pandemic back, you know, back when, when, when most folks were still going into the office, um, but we certainly leveraged it uh, and have ramped up, uh, you know, the, the, the use of that tool, but, but, it's a, but I think it's a balancing act, right? Like we've talked about here as sort of a common theme of you know using some of these assessments and some of these tools um but it's also it's 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 not a pass or fail necessarily right it's we're going to take that into conjunction with the humanistic um and, and person to person interaction that, that our recruiters have and they're able to make that judgment call um, but it's it's another tool that they're able to either um you know uh you know back up some of their um uh th their own assessments of, of these candidates right uh, and take that into consideration when they're evaluating these candidates for a possible fit for our clients. Right. Adam, I know, I know you guys are, you know, doing quite a bit also in, yeah. you know, I mean, with us, but with other technologies yeah. and now that you've gone remote completely and they're pretty dispersed and kind of view things really yeah. on the internet, right? I mean, a, a yeah. lot of access, a lot of abilities, a lot of support technologies. Uh, tell us how that, you know, the K-Force is, uh, is kind of evolving with all this. You know, I think to where Denver was really going, right, there was a lot of customers early on in that pandemic phase that just were in dire straits. They needed people, right? And then it was hard to be able to kind of scale to that point. When you look at, you know, the humanity, um, you know, really kind of maximizing that at an individual desk level, it's because you're building fantastic relationships. There's a lot of trust that's been there. So what we really looked at doing was figuring out, was there a way that we could automate our process to drive referrals and to drive, you know, knowledge base, a knowledge worker kind of program within relationships that we already had pre-existing via, um, you know, candidates that we had placed previously or just other relationships we had built with the, uh, that we had built throughout the, uh, the throughout the industry. So what we wound up looking at was an automated, you know, mobile referral platform. And that was actually a way where we could scale to support many of these customers that, that were coming, not just for one or two needs, but tens or hundreds, because we were tapping into the networks that we already knew existed. And from a 24 hour, you know, round the clock kind of cycle, those relationships were already being leveraged because I was already known to these candidates or these consultants or these people that we knew within the industry. And they were, you know, helping get direct access within their networks. So it was uh, just a connection point where the relationship and the humanity is what really drove the front end of that. But technology helped automate it to the process to be able to build those networks out faster and be able to scale, um, you know, across multiple skill sets in industry. Hmm, very interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think that's been part of the conversation is, um, you know, especially around remote work initially where we use the tools to kind of um, – still stay connected around trusts that have been built, you know, from before. And everybody was wondering once that needs to grow or move on, some companies especially, how is it going to look like when 
uh, you hire employees who you've only ever engaged with over the way we're doing today. Um, and, and engaging with others. It's not just the recruiter who probably is much more sensitive to communications patterns, but you know, uh, fellow employees um, and everyone else that they might work with, and especially large organizations across the organization, when this is the best uh, you know, point of contact that they might have for a while, right? In, in big organizations, obviously global organizations have seen this issue a lot more. Uh, but it's becoming clearly uh, a, a more, more of the norm than, than ever before. Yeah, and I think and just to add on to that, um, you know, another yeah. thing I think that we're all sort of saying here is that we're all leveraging technology, but we're not trying to replace, we're not using technology to replace that human-to-human -human interaction. And in a lot of ways, it's so we can get to the candidates more quickly to have those human-to-human -human, human -human interactions. So I mean, think that's an important piece to underscore. Absolutely. But I think I think it's been, you know, just to simplistically identify, it's been used in the communication facility, whether it be written forms and w without necessarily being applied to the uh, um, representation of an individual. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not technology trying to fake out an individual. I'm technology like like what we're doing here um, and facilitating and trying to make it easier scheduling technologies, you know, whatever, whatever it might be to kind of clarify or do the engagement, you know, in a, in a more enhanced manner, given the fact that we were not able to, uh, to engage as often, you know, person to person as we did before. Steve. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I think we're, 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 there are several categories of, uh, of technology of automation that, that, that are applicable to recruiting. Uh, you know, the, the, the area, uh, you know, we talk about bots and assessments and, and calendar and, and calendaring and scheduling and what have you. And those are great. But I think generally speaking, the, 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 the problem that everybody has, and doesn't matter what side of the track you're on, is getting people to respond to you. Uh, the bulk of the audience here, I guarantee you, uh, does the bulk of their sourcing on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn response rates are way down. I mean, exceptionally far down. Um, the, the 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 people are being barraged with 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 in malls at 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 an un, at, at a pornogra pornographic rates. That that's how bad it is. And you know, so the the challenge though is how how can you get to someone if you, you know, it, rather, it, rather than a fish at the same pond with the same rod, with the same test, with the same bait at the same time uh, as everyone else, uh, it's the sourcing technologies that are still an important part of, you know, you know, automation. You know, there are no number of platforms. There's Hire Tool, there's Seek Out, there's Gem, there's Intello, there's uh, Human Predictions, and I can go on and on and on. And what those do uh, are, are allow uh an individual at scale to obtain contact information about people and you know with the right you know then it becomes an issue of of messaging and engagement and and branding and and rather than just the typical linkedin profile or the typical strategy by both sides of the track i love your profile you're a perfect fit send me your resume when would you like to start and, you know, you know, getting, you know, someone's personal email or their personal cell phone so you could, you know, barrage them with text is, is, is just as an important part of the conversation as, you know, the, the, the assessment pieces that allow you to scale things. And uh, I, I think if, if there's ever going to be a, a, the one area in recruiting which is ripe for improvement, it is in that sourcing phase and identifying, you know, who, you know, is this person likely uh, a likely per, a likely person to, you know, fill a position? That okay. there's th that that there has been, I think, in, in all the areas of, of, of uh, recruiting tech, that's the that's the area that's made made the greatest progress so far. Would, would you guys uh, agree then in that in that end of the spectrum that um, recruiting has gone the way of online marketing? Uh, and, and all the automation we've seen in online marketing um, is, it, is that a, is that a core um, sort of skill set and technology front application um, to get attention to get people's you know 
pay attention to me because I've got the better opportunity. Um, you, you see a lot of application there. That's programmatic advertising. Let's SEO. It's all part of, you know, how it's targeting. Targeting is, is, is vitally important. To, uh, to change the message, to get the engagement rates up. Yeah, uh, the thing, you, know, you, 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 you can use a technology to A, B, that's the beauty of programmatic platforms. You can use, you can A, B, C, D, E, F, G test all your different campaigns and sit and see which one results in the highest, you know, positive response rate. Yeah, we, we, we were talking about when two are coming together, already inclined to look for a match. But I think Steve, in a way, has taken it upstream where uh, before that even happens, if no one's responding to your messaging or your outreaching, you know, you're not going to be practicing how to get better at matching because there's no one to match with yet. Um, so, you know, maybe Jamie, new organizations, have you yeah. guys you sort of taken yeah. recruitment to, to online advertising techniques? So, so Hans, I'm going to go broader on you. I, uh, I chafe a bit at thinking that it's online marketing. It's marketing with Marketing. online being a component of it. And my concern is that everything's automated to the point that uh, exactly what Steve said, Here, here's this, you're a great fit. You know, it's kind of the one size fits all, which I, I love Steve's expression in terms of uh, fishing in the same ponds. So let, let's face it, for the target talent that we're really trying to get after, it's a puddle in many segments, not a pond that we're fishing in. So once you get in that puddle, it's a matter of getting to know folks and what resonates with them. So am I starting outside in or inside out, right? So I, I've got five, I've got 50, whatever the case may be. And there absolutely is a place for marketing campaigns to get to those puddles in online tools. Once you're there though, that, that's the intersection with the humanity and the ability to relate on a human to human basis. And do I wanna to get to know you? Which yeah, there's tools that can help with that. But the, to me, at the end of the day, the recruiter is still the secret sauce, right? At, at the yeah. end of that experience, that's the memory. It becomes recruiter Bob or Sally that, that, uh, whose brand is built or shaped based on that interaction. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, I, think, I think we all in this industry recognize that all this is, is to put together these people that need to make it uh, so that they're willing to take the next steps and to make the commitments and to actually engage um, so I think uh, we've had consistent, you know, understanding that recruiters aren't being replaced necessarily. They, they get the opportunity to hone in, to focus in, to exercise more of their skill as they're, as they're making the final stages of the match happen. And it's very similar even with eTechie, you know, where we provide this expert recruiter. Um, you know, sorry, it, 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 we provide the expert recruiters with experts that understand the technology, give everybody a lot of confidence. That's what's being discussed in the interviews. Are, are, are sincere, very engaging, um, you know, really driving towards the type of trust and, and commitment towards making a final decision of committing. All right, so um, we got a little bit of time here. We're still in pretty good shape. Um, before we answer some of these questions or take a look at these questions, um, I think the last thing is probably, um, you know, we're all in good position to see where it's heading a little bit more. So we, we've talked about, you know, things we've seen uh, the purpose of what we're doing right now. Um, what about, what about, you know, what, what's around the corner here? Um, you know, we obviously don't know when this pandemic is really going to relax. Let's say, um, we can all forecast and think about that, um, as it translates into the way people are working and let's just, you know, understand that what we're doing in the staffing industry and recruiting is a form of work. Um, knowing that all of that is, is being done on a remote basis using the technology like we're doing this conference with. Um, and that behind the scenes, we know a lot of compute power is being put in data analysis and, and modeling for machine learning patterns and so on and so forth. So as more of that piles on, you know, what, is it, what does it turn into? Uh, we know that there's a chronic shortage, you know, so the macroeconomics suggest that you know, this might be the beginning, more resignations, inflation, where everyone's going to be going out and looking for, you know, 40% increases just by switching jobs, which means it's, it's, it's very hectic, it's turbulent, the velocity's up. So, so, so besides everything just getting harder, 
um, you know, what are your insights into uh, watch out for this or, or prioritize this way and look for this first? Um, I don't know who wants to kick it off, but, uh, but I think our audience would love to get a little bit of a crystal ball effect here. Well, let, 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 let me give a quotable. Okay. All everyone on the panel has heard it. Um, there, there's a saying: if it's written in Python, it's machine learning. If it's written in AI, it's it's in a PowerPoint. There 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 is an inordinate amount of uh, technology out there that that is being marketed as artificial intelligence. And uh, you know, for any of you who are dem demoing an AI platform, um, it's 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 incumbent. I believe it's vitally incumbent upon you to ask whoever is demoing it to show me the AI. Where did it come from? Uh, in, in, in most cases, they're, they're, they're more, it's more rule-based stuff and machine learning and, and, and algorithms that were culled from you know, experts, if you will. And all, and all the inherent biases that we know, you know are necessarily viewed as a positive thing either, right? So that's Correct. all accumulated now. But I, but I think, you know, in terms of, you, you mentioned shortages and, and, and I had to say an unfortunate phrase, a war for talent. I, I'm not a big fan of military metaphors when it comes to recruiting. But I think what, what, what we're, 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 we're seeing, um, and I, what a previous, someone who I previously worked for, you look, we're looking at, the, the, we looked at talent shortages and we realized they're just not out there. You take uh, people who are in banking, who 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 um, who uh, support mainframe ACH transactions with COBOL-based systems. Well, you know the the number of people with COBOL skills are 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 you know dying faster than I can't think of a funny metaphor. And so what 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 savvy companies are doing, savvy states are doing, is they're going into their communities and using technology. To help teach people about technology, and so I I can see, you know, you know, uh, you know, you know, Denver, uh, you know, you know, Jamie, Adam, you know, your 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 companies, uh, you know, partnering with some of these learning and development firms to use to 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 develop technology development platforms. Since you grow your own, have your own, you know, organic garden uh, filled with you know luscious treats that you can place it. At, at companies, uh, I, I if I'm in the staffing industry, I'm going to look at those types of partnerships and use technology to, you know, I, you know, address the shortage by by in fact, in fact, you know, going into underserved communities, going into you know uh, people who, uh, you know, are, who come out of jail, going to people with disabilities, neurodiversity across the anything and build your own. And then, you know, using technology is going to have to be uh, is going to be required to train the people, to place the people, to manage the people. That is a, uh, I think, one of the next big things, which have, is already have here. Seen, have you guys seen? I mean, obviously, there's dependencies on platforms, let, let's say technological platforms, and the companies are getting bigger. They're putting more resources. They're kind of connecting dots they're, they're creating a partnership ecosystem of other apps and uh, do you see you know that spilling over into um, you know re recruitment or staffing companies that are dependent like a bullhorn or something else that has a bunch of partners and and they're interconnected and, and then all of a sudden you get some efficiencies you know of automating different parts is coming part of a platform how, how much are you guys sort of reflecting on belonging to ecosystems and the automation that, you know, is, is sitting between those parts in an ecosystem. Uh, is, is that, is that a particular trend or, or, or a way of viewing, uh, uh, you know, an efficient way of managing, you know, we, we, we have all these recruiters that uh, I'm sorry, all these experts, interviewers that are part of our system and recruiters as well. Um, and obviously we, we try to create an ecosystem to kind of, make it so that people appreciate how to engage with each other um, and, and make those resources available on a marketplace. So do you think these ecosystems, marketplaces of technologies and the way they interconnect, you know, with, with, with some inherent built-in automation and capability, an important strategy, you know, as a way to stay on top of the, of the better technologies and the enhancements that are being made as, it, as, it, as, it, as it's applied to your, to your needs? 
uh, just thoughts on, on, on your platforms or, or ecosystems as a way to kind of bring more uh, coordinated tech into the, uh, into the recruitment world? Yeah, I'll go. Um, a couple things that come up um, for me is uh, just as we kind of look forward uh, are that we're, we're likely going to see more because we've there are platforms out there that exist today that can you know, that can theoretically automate a, a pretty good portion of the recruiting cycle. And um, so I think we're going to see that more in the marketplace. Uh, but I think at the same time, I think what we've got to layer in to those models is that, you know, if a candidate chooses, right? So one thing is we've got to create the different channels, right? To allow the candidates to connect with us, uh, you know, sort of however they want. But what we've got to do is layer in the ability for those candidates, should they start down one particular channel to, to um, reach out and start to connect with us on a person to person level, you know, as soon as they want to. So that's one. And then uh, the second is, you um, you know, we were really expecting um, more adoption uh, of, of AI in the recruiting space. And I think um, one opportunity that, that that's going to create is to address and increase um, diversity and reduce inequities, right? Um, if you think about AI, you know, all of us have these unconscious biases. And so when you think about AI, Obviously, that's not built into the. Uh, and that's not that's not a part of an uh, of an algorithm. So that could really help us move the needle from a diversity standpoint, uh, candidate representation, et cetera. So those are just a couple things as we look forward. I thought I would um, call out. Yeah. By the way, so, we're going to try to capture as many of these questions as we can and figure out a way to get back to you. So some of these require us to think as well a little about how to how to best respond. Um, so if we don't get to these questions, by all means, we'll keep we'll keep trying, even if we run out of time today. So go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say I I like your your word, Hans. E ecosystem. I think for some of us, we have to redefine to both Steve and Denver's point our definition of what an ecosystem is. So one of the things that's become clear to me over the last five years. I think about, I mean, if you want to take good supply chain principles down to like 12, 13 year olds, and I think about places where the digital divide still exists and we have underutilized sources of talent. So is there a place for technology in terms of making the, those connections? Absolutely. I go to a higher level though. So, so tools, technology has a place in the portfolio as do capabilities. So at the end of the day, it's still an individual, an owner of a, of a staffing firm, an owner of a company, a recruiter, who's responsible for generating the result at the end of the day. So I've got to have the right tools so I can be productive. I can, just as we talked about with target marketing, I've got to be able to continue to build relationships and influences, uh, influence others. I've got to be able to mine data. There's, there's a lot of different hats that we're asking folks to wear. And the more that tools can help help to make those connections, the better off we're all going to be. But I love your word that the ecosystem that there are places that we're all uh, tapping into and places in the ecosystem that we're just starting to make eye contact. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of, um, you know, automation and, you know, technology that goes in making certain products work better with other products. And then as these uh, marketplaces and uh, app stores and ecosystems and partner portals, all these words for how to engage people that add value to that core and, and vice versa. You know, I might be a technology that's on someone else's platform and, and maybe get large enough to have some people want to add their value to our platform. And these things will, you know, start to solidify more of a network ability you know, between all the technologies, you know, and, and, and like the collaborative environment that we all work with, simply to communicate, you can imagine the, uh, the bots all working with the bots, um, you know, with, with intermingled uh, people, you know, complementing them and, and sort of directing them and understanding how to use the information and, and, and the work that's being gathered. Um, and obviously, it can, it can just keep going. Well, in my earlier... My, my earlier point, Hans, around uh, looking at all four of those dimensions, including cultural fit and manager fit, there's this thing called EQ that somehow we need to do a better job of getting our arms around in this space as well, right? Oh, absolutely. I think I think where, you know, we, we started with that division of where does a bot stop and the person kicks in. Um, and, and people that are going to get that understanding 
better are going to ultimately you know do better especially in, in, the, in the world that we live when we're recruiting and staffing adam Thank anything you, that you guys you know we're we're short here about five minutes um and like i said i think we'll answer some of these questions uh take them a little bit further if there's anything that sticks out right away that we want to address otherwise probably some closing notes um why don't we do that you know how long should a recruitment relationship last is a, is, a, is one here that darren has, has, has you know understood uh or brought out and uh you know we know recruiters also move on just like your banker does just like uh the grocery favorite checkout teller person does uh sandwich place person you know people move on things change so the question is um you know how does this technology get married to recruiters you know any, any comments on change and how quickly i mean obviously things are moving faster um but if you don't stick with something long enough then you know it takes a little longer to recapitalize an investment up front to learn the platform uh, and any thoughts some more about technology versus, you know, people in, in terms of longevity? Adam, why don't you give it a shot? I mean, I always, you know, from, from my seat, you know, the, those relationships are, are 13 plus years deep at this point, right? You know, you try to keep, allow those to maintain, you know, I think with some of the technology in terms of how we're capturing information, in terms of how we're leveraging that data to assess throughout the process, as people maybe move on and leave, it should allow you to be able to bridge the gap within the organization that maybe that recruiter worked with previously, because we have a better understanding about who these candidates potentially are, right? Where, you know, we're hopefully not having those folks go into the black hole. We can allow some automation to provide some connectivity into other um, other recruiters that would be able to allow those relationships to continue and the support and uh, the relationship building with for those candidates and individuals uh, would be able to continue. Sounds like you said as long as it needs to. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes sense. Well, it's a big topic, obviously. We wanted to tackle a big topic here. Um, Technology is on everybody's mind, um, expedited by the pandemic and the fact that I think most of us in the knowledge work world uh, online are, are, you know, engaging predominantly more so the way we are right here, right now and with these tools, sending information, making phone calls, but it is a lot about uh, engaging around information. Um, and, um, you know, and, and finding how it fits best in a world where eventually it needs to be confident, you know, trustworthy, engaging quickly uh, is, is, is going to be a challenge that is, again, just just fueled by by the technology that's come out, you know, especially during these pandemic times. And that's what we wanted to try to tackle today, you know, find a balancing act. We gave a few examples with bots, especially in the matchmaking and the, and the commitment phase. And um, hopefully we, uh, we accomplished a little bit of that today. Um, any final words from anyone compelling? Anything that you guys want to sort of get out done on this before uh, we, we, we close shop here? I, um, my, <clears throat> excuse me, puberty. Uh, you know, my, my advice is always try, demo every piece of software that you have time to demo. And, and keep in mind your workflows, the people you serve, the people you engage, and you know, make a logical determination is, is it going to help you be, you know, become 1% more efficient or is it not? And if it's something that helps you become more efficient and allows you to serve your customers and your clients and, and, you know, your community better, try it. You can always say no. What, what, how, how would people vote? Uh, are, are, is, is, the, is the communities out there in, engaged, willing to try more stuff than they used to before? Are, are they finding that they, they need to? Do you think in general most people are saying, yeah, what the hell, let's give this a shot, you know? Uh, we we, we got to do something, right? It, it, is it generally still uh, uh, almost commensurate with the pandemic, forcing everybody to go remote work and use this technology? Do you think people are... I've learned a lesson in some respects that maybe they should be a little bit more outgoing, a little bit more change oriented. You know, this, this industry tends to just want to listen to the clients, which they, they should, of course, uh, but not sometimes go beyond that. 
you know, or, or bring the client's ideas. So is, is this really expedited that, uh, that innovative gene that's in, inside our industry and recruiters or, or not so much or a little bit or a lot more? I'm just curious to find out how much technology is actually changed things or changed beyond needing to change. My dad's so, nine, my dad's 98 years old and I taught him how to do research and he has our family tree back to the 1600s or so. There must be some 15,000 entries and it works for him. And it's, it's, it's allowed him to, you know, become more, you know, self-supporting, more, you know, vibrant as he's gotten older. And there are other things like, Steve, can you come over and help me with this phone? I don't know how to use it. Right. So it really depends. You, you, t you pick and choose the technology that works for you. Right. And it's so not always good. So Hans, to, to me, to, and, and I've worked in other, in other industries, it's no different than any other industry. You don't have a choice or you're dying, right? Yeah. Some of us remember the name Blockbuster Video, right? I mean, there's, there's a whole... <laughs> So it, you, you, you've got to push and, and we've got an accountability again, back to the majority of my time being on the consumer side of the staffing industry as a differentiator, we've got an accountability to push our clients to think different. That, that ought to be part of the value prop. Yep. yep. Exactly. Yep. Well, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I have a feeling that we might get cut off already anyway, but uh, <laughs> thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Uh, look forward to, uh, talking with you all again and, and for opening up the, uh, the thought process around what's possible and look forward to, uh, to seeing you around. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for hosting. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for chiming in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.